In this video, I'll be replacing the ignition coil on a Porsche 944, along with demonstrating some common tests to ensure its proper functionality. Some signs that you may have a failing ignition coil include a rough idle, a noticeable loss in engine power, poor fuel economy, sudden backfiring or engine misfires, a hard start or no start condition, and stalling, sputtering, or jerking. When it comes to the ignition system, it's generally more common for things like the spark plugs, the plug wires, the DME relay, or the distributor cap and rotor to wear out long before you'll see issues with the ignition coil. But with decades of age and higher mileage on these cars, a failing coil could certainly be on the list of things to consider. Ignition coils tend to fail prematurely because of either bad spark plugs or plug wires, in addition to prolonged engine heat and vibration that can cause damage to the coils over time. So if you've already tested or replaced some of those more common items, it may be a good time to inspect your car's ignition coil. An ignition coil, also known as a spark coil, is essentially a small transformer that takes the 12 volts of direct current from the battery and steps it up to the thousands of volts needed to create a spark strong enough to ignite the air fuel mixture in the cylinders of the engine. So as you can imagine, a failing ignition coil will result in a weak or inconsistent spark output, which would warrant replacement. So let's see how we can use a multimeter to perform some basic tests and identify any issues. The first thing we'll need to do is locate the ignition coil on the front right side of the engine compartment just behind the headlight motor. And while the coil can be accessed as it sits, I'm going to temporarily remove the headlight motor for a better view. And once we've identified the coil, we can remove the protective cover on top to reveal the electrical connections below. The larger center connection is the coil's output wire to the distributor cap, and we can see the positive and negative terminals on either side of that. The positive connection will be the black wire, secured by a 10mm nut, and the negative connection is marked by the green wire, secured by an 8mm nut. It's generally a good idea to first test power in the circuit to rule out any electrical issues prior to replacing a part. The ignition coil is supplied with 12 volts of current from the battery when the ignition switch is turned on. So go ahead and turn the ignition to the on position, set your multimeter to the DC setting, and then touch the probes to the positive terminal and any grounding point on the car. You should also get about 12 volts of current from the coil's negative terminal to a grounding point because the ignition rotor isn't actively closing any of the distributor points while the engine isn't running. If you're not getting approximately 12 volts with these tests, there's a problem with either the ground or power to the coil, and you'd want to check your grounds and trace the power cable back to the central electrical panel for further inspection. Once the circuit checks out okay, we can now perform an ignition coil resistance check to confirm the coil's condition. Here it's best to go ahead and disconnect the three wires attached to the coil to get a clean reading, and we'll be using the ohm setting to test the resistance on the coil. We can check the primary coil resistance by connecting the ohm meter between the positive black wire and the negative green wire terminals on the coil. The resistance here should read between 0.4 and 0.6 ohms. A reading of zero resistance would indicate a shorted coil, while a high resistance reading would indicate an open circuit in the coil, either of which would warrant replacement with a new part. Next, the secondary coil resistance can be checked by connecting the ohm meter between the coil output terminal on top and the ignition coil negative terminal. The resistance here should fall between 5,000 and 7,200 ohms, and if it's out of specification, the ignition coil should be replaced. As an alternative test, if you happen to have an inline spark checker on hand, you can also use that as a tool to confirm the ignition coil's operation, but either method is an effective way to assess the coil's overall condition. I don't know much about the history of the existing ignition coil on this car, other than it's probably seen better days by the looks of it, but while performing the resistance test, the secondary coil checked out okay at around 6400 ohms. I set the multimeter to the 20k ohm setting for this test, so any reading at this level needs to be multiplied by 1000 for a final result. The primary coil, on the other hand, had a resistance reading of around 2 ohms, with the meter set at the 200 ohm setting. The problem with some of the cheaper meters is that they're not well calibrated for low-end readings. So if I touch these two leads together, ideally we should see no resistance or a reading of zero. But as you can see, it's consistently reading about 1.6 ohms. So 1.6 ohms is zero in this case, and if we subtract that from the coil reading of 2.0, we get 0.4 ohms, which means this coil falls within factory specification. That said, I have been proactively replacing the ignition components on this car, so I went ahead and picked up a new coil anyway. We'll be working with a switched power source here, but it's a good practice to disconnect the negative battery terminal just in case. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and remove the plastic cover from the top of the ignition coil, 
pull the output plug wire straight off the top, and then use a 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter wrench to remove the nuts from the positive and negative power connections. With all the wiring out of the way, the ignition coil can be removed from its mounting bracket, which is secured by just one 10 millimeter bolt down on the side. So just loosen that up a bit and then the coil can be slid up between the headlight motor and the power steering fluid reservoir if you have one. And if you're finding that it's too difficult to get a wrench down in on the fittings, the coil can first be removed with the wiring connected, then slid out of the mount for easier access to the connections. Now that the old coil has been removed, the new one can be installed in the reverse order. So just slide it down into position inside the mount and then tighten down the 10 millimeter bolt on the bracket. Reconnect the black positive wire to the larger 10 millimeter terminal and the green ground wire to the smaller 8 millimeter terminal and then tighten down the nuts with a hand wrench. Next, the output wire to the distributor cap can be reconnected at the center of the coil and finally the protective cover can be pushed back into place. At this point, the battery terminal can be reconnected and finally the car can be started to test the new ignition coil's operation.